How do you know if you've torn your ACL? That's the question I'm going to answer for you in this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Hurt. I've been practicing orthopedic surgery in Austin, Texas since 2005, and I've diagnosed hundreds of ACL tears during that time. It's such a common diagnosis for me that I can usually tell if someone has torn their ACL just after listening to them for a few minutes. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the pearls I've picked up through the years that help me know if someone has that diagnosis. So let's talk about your history first, and I want to keep this simple. Your medical history is it's basically just your story about what's going on with your health. The history includes when a problem started and how. It also includes what happened immediately afterwards as well as since then. Here are some of the common things I hear in the history of patients who have torn their ACLs. The pop. The majority of patients will describe a pop in their knee when they tear their ACL. Now, you may just feel this or you may even remember hearing the sound when it happened. After a cutting move or a fall. ACL tears almost always occur during some athletic activity or after a violent fall. For instance, during a football or soccer game, you might be trying to cut aggressively to one side or the other, and when you plant your leg, you feel it shift out of place. Almost like your body went one way and your knee went another. Or, or maybe you were landing with some force from a jump, like after getting a rebound, and you felt your knee bend awkwardly. It could also occur if your knee is struck from the side by another player, as commonly occurs in soccer or football. That said, there are a few times that an ACL can tear with a more simple, subtle pivoting move, but those are less common than these other scenarios. Immediate limping. One of the questions that I always ask is, were you able to keep playing and finish the game after the initial injury? If you have torn your ACL, the most you will be able to do is to try for just a second or two, only to realize that there is something really wrong with your knee. I've never known a patient to be able to finish a game after tearing their ACL. Usually they will immediately limp off the field and they'll be done for the day. Post-injury swelling. If you've torn your ACL, you will most certainly develop an effusion. That's a medical term and it means fluid inside your knee. Now, this could happen immediately or it could take a few hours to develop. The swelling will help make your knee stiff and painful. I made a video on knee swelling, so be sure and take a look at it if your knee is swollen and you want more information on that. Quick side note here, the swelling and the limp that accompanies it will usually resolve within two to three weeks, but your ACL will still be torn, so don't be fooled. Otherwise, you'll find out the hard way that your knee still isn't stable if you try to return to a sport without getting it fixed. Knee instability. Okay, so this is important to understand. It's absolutely true that your knee will hurt right after you initially tear your ACL. But as I said, that acute inflammation, it's going to resolve within a few weeks and you'll feel pretty normal with daily living. Here's my point. The reason to reconstruct an ACL is not because your knee is hurting. Once past this initial injury, the ACL deficient knee, it doesn't hurt. The reason to reconstruct your ACL is because it won't be stable. Your knee will function fine when you're walking straight or, or just doing everyday activities. You'll probably be able to even lift weights or, or run as long as you are running straight ahead. The catch is when you try to change directions quickly while walking, or definitely if you are playing sports and you're cutting side to side, you'll likely feel your knee shift again, you'll possibly fall, and your knee's gonna swell up. So if you've had a major injury to your knee and it feels better, but has never been stable again, you need to get your ACL checked by an orthopedic surgeon. Positive Lachman. All right, so what is a positive Lachman's? This is the most common way an orthopedic surgeon will diagnose an ACL tear. With the patient laying down and relaxed, I gently bend the knee and then pull forward on the tibia. As seen here, in a normal exam in which the ACL is intact, both the patient and the doctor can feel a clunk as the lax ACL suddenly becomes taut and the tibia stops moving forward. To help you understand, here's a graphic showing what's actually happening inside. This is a knee viewed from the side. The femur and tibia are linked by the ACL shown in purple here. When you perform the Lachman's test on a normal knee, the intact ACL prevents the knee from moving forward. The ligament, it, it acts as a check ring. However, if you have torn your ACL, then your knee will be more lax than your other non-injured side, and the surgeon can feel, and sometimes even see, the shift. Now, it seems simple enough, but trust me, this is a finesse exam that took years for me to master. 
Here's a video of me doing a Lotmas exam on a knee with a torn ACL. See how the tibia moves a lot more than the video of the normal knee? I never feel the rope, or in this case the ACL, get taut. The knee, it just keeps moving. MRI. An MRI scan is the final way to confirm your tear. MRIs use large magnets to create an image of all the structures in your knee, including your anterior cruciate ligament. A lot of people ask if their ACL looked okay on their x-ray. But an x-ray doesn't show anything but the bone, and in most cases, it's going to be normal even if you just tore your ligament. That's why we need an MRI. Plus, we can make sure that there are no other injured structures in your knee that can commonly be hurt at the same time. This is an MRI image of a knee. It shows a cross-section of the knee as if viewing from the side, in profile. So this is the knee cap. Here's the femur and the tibia, and this is the ACL here. A normal MRI will show a well-defined ligament with parallel striations, just like you see on this image. A torn ACL, on the other hand, will just be a blob of gray, or sometimes will even show you portions of ligament that are flipped out of place. Here's a good example of that. The normal ACL is nowhere to be found. In addition, if you have just torn your ACL, you will almost always have a characteristic bone bruise pattern. Let me explain. When you tear your ACL, your knee actually pivots and shifts violently. We call this a pivot shift. This is what makes you feel like your knee dislocated. Notice how the femur slides back on the tibia and forcefully impacts in the back. Then it shifts back to a more normal anatomic position. What you are left with is a characteristic bruising of the bone in two specific areas, as shown in red on this drawing. Now let's look at a real MRI of a knee after an ACL tear. See those two white areas in the bone? That white signifies increased water content. That means bruising, just like was seen in the drawing. We call this a pivot shift contusion pattern. Sometimes radiology reports even call it a fracture, though I prefer to call it a bruise to avoid confusion. Regardless, if you see this pattern on MRI, you can be pretty sure your ACL is no longer functional, even if the MRI reading says you have a, quote, partial ACL tear, unquote. I really hope you haven't just torn your ACL if you're watching this video. But I do want to encourage you. This is an injury that you can come back from, even if you've just torn it. Come see me or another orthopedic surgeon in your area so we can confirm the diagnosis and get you back to healing. I'm Dr. Joel Hurt with Text Orthopedics. Please, it really matters. So hit that like button, share this video with others, and, and ask more questions in the comment section. I'll keep working on the videos in the meantime. Thank you, and I'll see you later.